there are some amazing new functions in Automatic 11.11 version 1.6. Let's have a look at them. Today we are going to look at the pre-release version, but most of the functions you can see here, the new features should also be in the final version. And here you have a list. I will link this list below the video. And at the end of the list, when you scroll down, you see here assets. It has a source code in a zip and in a tar file. So you can download that, unpack that, put the folder inside anywhere on your drive, and then simply run the web UI user.bat to install everything else that is needed. So if you already have automatic 11.11 to try out this version, is very easy. Another advice I want to give you is to open up the web UI user.bat in any kind of text editor and then in the command line arcs write minus minus ckpt minus dir and then the original direction of your models of your checkpoints in the original automatic 11.11 folder so you don't have to copy these files over. You can also do this for the other folders for example here I have minus minus embeddings minus dear or I have minus minus VAE minus dear. You can also do that for LoRa's and so on. When you save that file and then start the web UI minus user.bat, this is going to load all of these files so they are going to be available in the pre-release version of Automatic 11.11. So this is how the interface looks right now. And it's very similar to what we have seen before. Now here you have tabs that are always here for the textual inversion, the hyper networks, the checkpoints and the LoRa's. So you can click on them and you can see your LoRa's or checkpoints right away, which is very useful. Now here's an interesting thing. When you mouse over the checkpoints, you will see a little hammer and wrench icon here. Now when you click on that, this will open up an editor. In here, you can add a description. You can choose a VAE model that you want to have loaded automatically when you're loading that model so that you don't have to remember what kind of VAE is best for this model. And you can also add some notes down here. This will also help you to remember, for example, if this needs clip two or clip one to work best. You can also replace the preview over here and then save everything so that you have saved this for each model individually. Another interesting thing you can do is found here on the right side where you can save your styles. A style is the positive and the negative prompt in here. And now you have an edit function with this brush icon over here. So when you click on that, this will give you a pop-up. And in here, you can, for example, now see that this is loading the positive and negative prompt I have in here. And I would be able to write a name here, let's write test, and then save this as a prompt. But what I can also do is to load a different prompt in here, for example, for realistic vision. And now I can do adjustments for that. So I can save these adjustments. I can also give it a different name if I want to. And I also can delete this style if I want to. That makes it a lot more easy to handle all of your different styles. Now let's come to something that's probably very useful for all of the SDXL users. So of course, up here, you're going to load your main model. Let's go here with SDXL base. And now down here, you can see I have a section for refiner. When I click on that, I have here a checkpoint chooser. This has the same checkpoint folder. So in here, I'm going to select my refiner model. Now that this is loaded over here, I have switch at and the value of 0.8, which means that 80% of the steps are going to be rendered with the base model. And then the last 20% of the steps are going to be rendered with the refiner model. So with this slider here, you can simply choose the ratio you want to have between the base model and the refiner model. Now in here, this does not have any way to turn it on or off. So if you don't want to use the refiner because you're using a 1.5 model, you simply close this view and then the refiner is not used. The same is true for the high-res fix. You can open that up. And now in here, you can choose, of course, your upscaler that you want to use. But then on top of that, you now have also the ability to choose a high-res checkpoint 
and a high res sampling method that is different from the original render method you're using up here. This is really, really useful because with that you can do model switching with the high res fix method. For example, you can render an image with ref animated and then in the high res fix switch over to a realistic vision with a high denoise value of, for example, 0.7 and render the image again in a higher resolution but with a completely different model and then end up with a realistic style afterwards. However, to see these two choices down here, you have to activate that in the settings. For that, I would suggest that you click on the settings tab, click down here on show all pages, and then use the search function of your browser and search for checkpoint. And when you go through the search results, you come here to an option that says high res fix, show high res checkpoint and sampler selection. It also tells you this requires a reload of the UI. So go back up to the top of the page, click apply settings. And then you go to extensions and click apply and restart UI to see these changes. Also in the settings, again, by clicking on show all pages, you use again the search function of your browser looking for GPU. And when you go to the first and only result, you can see that you can choose now here between the random number generator source as the GPU, CPU, or NV. This is for the seed creation so that you can create the same picture with different GPUs or CPUs because in the past there has been a difference between creating an image with the same seed on a Mac or on a PC or on an AMD card or an Nvidia card. I also find that with this inclusion of the refiner right into the process, the rendering times are faster for SDXL models. And I kind of feel like also the results look a lot better. Here you can see some examples that I've rendered with SDXL inside of this new version of Automatic 11.11. There's of course more changes to be found in the list. I'm going to link that below. And as you can also see for some of these points, there is a blue number next to it. You can click on it and this will give you a closer description of what is going on and often also includes some screenshots that give you a better explanation of the process and where to find this change inside of the UI. Let me know in the comments what you think about these changes. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.